Hi, welcome to another malware analysis video. Let's say we'll be looking at popcorn time ransomware. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is download the file. This is the SHA-256. So download that to the desktop. You see that's popped up. Um, as usual, we'll just check for any packers. Nothing found there. We'll have a look at P scanner. We're also going to have a look at the strings. Okay. So strings. You can see here Google showing restore your files.txt. Show your files.html. Here we have what looks like um, base64 encoded data. Um, we have a URL here popcorn time free.net. Some extensions, presuming, um, presuming that these are going to be the extensions which is going to encrypt. Uh, and then we have some sections that are ransom note here. So We'll not look at that in too much detail, we'll see whenever we actually uh, start to disassemble the malware and have a look at it running as to uh, what it's actually going to do. Okay, uh, PE scanner, so popcorn time dot exe, um, it was called Google, described as Google. See the entropy showing as suspicious in a couple of the sections here. We've got one uh, one um, resource entry, one import. The CRC is um, the claim CRC is matching the actual CRC. Obviously, it's not zero bytes. And okay, so. Um, that's fine. I'm going to jump over to the Windows system and have a look at this in a bit more detail. So, as usual, we'll jump over here, try and open SNIDA Pro. We can see here it's Microsoft.net assembly. So this isn't going to be the best. Um, this this isn't going to be the best place to look at it. But we'll just have a quick look. We see some functions here: AES decrypt, decrypt file. We have uh, base64 encode and base64 decode. So that value that we saw there, the big block of text, we're saying looks like it's probably base64 encoded. Um, that's likely encoded or de decoded you know, through this create MD5. Not too sure what they're using that for. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go through that in too much detail. We can see that it's a .NET executable, so we'll be better at opening this with DNSpy, and that'll uh, we'll be able to disassemble it and get a far better, uh, some some much clearer code. Okay, popcorn time. So. Jump in here. We have form 25. It's decompiler. Okay, so it looks like this is going to be in the interface here. You can see some labels, a timer, um, which presumably is going to uh, decrement until you know. I'm assuming they delete the files after a while uh, if you don't pay the ransom, or you know they might increase the ransom. It's um, pretty typical functionality. See some messages then, download and install them, please wait. And the countdown ends your files will be lost forever. Yep, yeah, okay. Um, we've got a countdown here. After you've made the payment, you'll get a code, please insert it here. Send whatever amount of bitcoins to this address. You must send at least whatever bitcoins or wallet and you'll get your files back. Uh, your personal unique ID, which is going to be used to tracking it. Wait, don't worry, there's a way you can restore your computer and all of your files. Okay, etc. We're going to have a proper look at the, at the ransom message anyway, so I'm not going to keep going through all the comments there. Okay, P 
be straight on the connection tray again. We have our timer function. Okay, what to do with the form there? What to do with the timer? Um, okay, so our AES encryption. Oops. Just jumped into the AES encryption. It wasn't really what I was looking to do. Let's go back to the form. Okay, delete files. You have two hours to pay when we lost forever. <laughs> kind of jumped again there by mistake. There's our file extensions. So I'm assuming is what it's going to encrypt. We have a URL there, image URLs, it's where it's looking to retrieve the images from. And we have this base64 decode, so it's going to be decoding this string. And there's another base64 there as well. So let's see what this is. Restore your files or HTML below. Uh, sorry, that's text code, okay. HTML file name, HTML code. Alright, let's copy this across to Remnux and just have a look to see if we echo, echo that base64. Okay, see some dot onion addresses here, some tour sites, see some uh, what's obviously parts of the ransom message and this has some tags around it, it's a HTML document so let's run that again and this time send it to test.html let's try and close that down ok so this is going to be the warning message we're going to get obviously we don't have a list of encrypted files because we're just looking at a ransom message here but we can see, can try and get an idea what the rans how this ransomware works. We don't have the timer there either. But okay, so sorry to say, your files have been encrypted. Don't worry. Your personal ID, please send at least one, at least one Bitcoin. Okay, yeah, send a hundred if you want. But uh, click to check your balance, current balances, etc. You store your files fast and easily. Please transfer one Bitcoin to this address. When we get the money, we'll send the private decryption key should be confirmed within two hours. We have another option, which is what's interesting, that's why I've decided to take a look at the popcorn time and somewhere. So uh, your other option is you can restore your files a nasty way. So send the link below to other people. If two or more people install the file and pay the ransom, then we'll decrypt your files for free. So Obviously, we can't have not been able to verify this. If it was just a case of infecting another two machines, I'd just spin up a couple more VMs um, and get them to install the malware from this link. But uh, you'd actually need to pay the ransom, so I'd need to have two bitcoins to go and actually test it out and see whether it works. Um, let's try and get some information about the motivation of the hackers. So, what we did, we've encrypted all the important messages, documents, videos, and other files on the computer. We have a very strong encryption algorithm used by governments all over the world. We store your personal decryption code to your files on our servers and we're the only ones that can decrypt your files. Please don't try to be smart. Anything other than payment will cause damage to your files and your files will be lost forever. If you do not pay in the next seven days, the decryption key will be deleted and your files will be lost forever. So why do we do that? We are a group of computer science students from Syria. As you probably know, Syria is having a bad time for the last five years. Since 2011, we have more than half a million people died and over 5 million refugees. Each part of the team has lost a dear member of his family. I personally have lost both my parents and my little sister in 2015. The sad part of this war is that all the parts keep fighting, but eventually we, the poor and simple people, suffer and watching our family and friends die each day. The world remains silent and no one is helping us, so we decide to take action. And a link to information about the war in Syria. I kind of approve the message. I don't approve the, what they're doing with the ransomware. Um, 
but obviously have uh, a lot of sympathy for the situation in Syria. Okay, so be perfectly sure that all money we get goes to food, medicine, shelter to our people. We're extremely sorry that we are forcing you to pay, but that's the only way we can keep living. Okay, so um, they've tried to provide some justification there, which is a lot more than most ransomware authors will do, um, who are just pretty, you know, open about the fact that they're looking for your money to, so they can get rich quick. So yeah, some information about buying Bitcoin, some links here, they're getting started. Um, cool, so we know what this message is going to look like. Let's go over to the other machine. I'll just have a quick look. I just want to see if um, the other base 64, what this other base 64 um, encoded messages. Let's clear that and let's echo this out. Okay, right, so this is more just a text version of what we just saw there. Okay, yeah, cool. So let's jump over to the Windows 7 system and do a bit of dynamic analysis, see what this ransomware actually looks like. Okay, so on the dynamic side, we'll just open the usual tools here. Um, I'm not really going to explain exactly what we're doing. I've explained it on a lot of the previous videos, so if you're just kind of getting started with malware analysis, then um, it'd be worth just kind of starting it somewhere earlier, um, ransomware analysis videos. Alright, so that's everything running. We want to that we want to we look it up. Um, take a registry snap, snapshot, so we can compare that after and we'll have a look. We'll uh, start monitoring the network traffic. And then we're ready to run. So, process spawned. Please check your internet connection and try again later. Okay. Okay, so there's a lot of strings in here. Let's see a web address. Uh, let's see a web address. Popcorn dash time something. There's quite a lot of strings in here. Some of the ransom message has been encrypted, etc. Okay, but it doesn't seem to be running the malware. That's just closed down. Um, we are getting a lot of traffic here. It seems to, it has made some requests. That's, um, Follow that HTTP stream. Okay, so calling out to Microsoft Corporation. Not too clear what that is. Yeah. HTTP is looking for an image here, one, two, three, four, five, six. 404 not found. Okay, the full request URI was popcorn dash time dash free dot net. So, well, congratulations. You just landed on the Okay. Um, the site is up. I don't know, I'm not sure. Um, whether this site was created as a place to host the malware for it to make contact to, or whether it was hijacked and is no longer is no longer hosting the malicious content which the which the ransomware was looking for there, but it certainly didn't it certainly hasn't been doing anything. So uh, I'm just going to go and have another quick look in DNS Spy. Uh, 
uh, the Enspy, sorry. Um, a couple of things we'll say about the ransomware. It, um, I know other analysts have um, noted some features about it, such as if you um, that the that the developers. I think we're gonna. They may have added a function so that if you enter the wrong decryption code four times, it'll just delete the files. Uh, I'm not sure whether we'll see that in here. Let's have a look. Um, I want to have a look, just obviously that didn't, the connection didn't, oh yeah, okay, please check your internet connection, try again later. So this is, whenever we ran that, it was obviously, uh, it was, oops, sorry, it was um, checking to see whether the malware had already been on the system, and so has it already been here, um, if so we can run it. Uh, or we can try and download the malware and then run it. If not, which we weren't able to do, it wasn't able to get there, it wasn't able to make the connection, then we just get an error message saying please check your internet connection. So let's have a look whether this has this tries. Okay, yeah, so it does have this functionality in here. Done. Uh, so whenever we hit the decrypt button, it looks like it's going to check the if this try is equals zero. Delete and file started. You have two hours to pay all your files. We lost forever. Um, then it's going to decrement the, uh, this dot tries. If it's greater than zero. Code is wrong. Please try. Please buy the right code. You've left whatever tries before your system will be blocked and then if it equals one last chance you must buy the right code otherwise your system will be blocked so um, and again so I'm not sure what, whether this functionality actually uh, was, was working whether if you did enter the wrong code four times it would delete all your files but uh, unfortunately because we're not going to be able to test that at the moment uh, at least we were able to decompile the malware and have an idea what what it was doing and obviously have a look at the ransom message that we would have seen the full list of uh, encrypted files would have been there and it's just interesting to see some some kind of innovation really within the ransomware uh, in ransomware development you know there's a lot of we saw with the jigsaw with jigsaw uh, with this and um, there's an, another piece of malware we'll look at probably in the next video uh, called Kubla, which is another interesting um, malware variant. Anyway, sorry we weren't able to do, do any real dynamic analysis there, but um, hope you've enjoyed the video anyway. Any questions or comments, uh, feedback, just leave a comment below and uh, like and subscribe. Thank you.